Hey folks, welcome back. We're going to be answering some questions in Blueprints in the next few videos, and this one is going to show you how to allow one Blueprint to communicate with another Blueprint. So I'm going to start from scratch with the first person template. You can go ahead and put this in your own project if you want, or you can start a new project and start from scratch as well. So what I always like to do just to visualize what I'm looking at is go to shapes and cube and bring a cube into the scene, scale it down so it's just a marker on the ground and drop it to the floor. I also like to turn it into a blueprint right now of just giving it a name of BP cube. And I'm gonna, actually let's do that a little bit different today. Let's call this sender. And I'm going to edit this popped up in a new window. I add a box collision. I pull that up and I scale that up. 1.5, 1.5, and let's do 20. So that, actually let's do 25. So that I know that all that is working. I'm going to compile this and save it. And then I'm going to create a second blueprint by doing something very, very similar doing shapes and cube, pulling that up, pulling that towards the camera, and I'm gonna scale this in the other direction. Actually, I'm gonna scale it in the X, leave the Y at one. And so my idea here is that when you touch one of these, the other one is gonna rotate. So I'm also gonna make this second one movable, and I'm going to turn this into a blueprint of type BP receiver. Okay, so I now have two blueprints. This one here is gonna be my receiver and the other one is going to be my trigger. So what I would like to do is go into the event graph for the receiver and I'm going to create a new command that is going to be a custom command, custom event. And I am gonna call this or receive. And so when I call receive, it is going to do something. And let's say, let's create a timeline. And my timeline is going to be I'm gonna set this up to be a rotator. I'm gonna double click it. I will create a new track, which is a float. I'm gonna right click to add a key of zero at zero. And then I will create another one that at five seconds is 90. So my idea here is that over five seconds, this will rotate to 90 degrees. That's the way I'm gonna try and use it. So I'm gonna go back to the event graph and I'm going to say update, set actor relative rotation. And it's gonna be target self, that totally works. And then I'm going to pull this track off to plug it into new relative rotation. But what I really wanna do is I want to make a rotator. And I'm gonna do that from roll, pitch, and yaw. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's going to allow me to plug this and I can change which one I want this to go into. So right now I think I'm going to try Y and I'll plug that in there. And so when receive is called, it's going to play the animation, which will allow this to set a rotator and set the rotation of our cube. Okay. Now, in order to test this and make sure that everything seems to be working fine, it might be a really good idea for me to have some debugging commands in here of just some alerts to say receive so that I know, even if it doesn't happen on screen, like if you forget to make your object, your blueprint movable and it doesn't appear to be working, but everything's working except you forgot to make it movable, this will help you out. It'll let you know where the problem is. Okay, so my receiver appears to be fine. Let's open up our sender. 
And so the sender, when I overlap, it's going to say, let's, let's put our print screen string here. It's going to say overlap. And then what we're going to try and do is we're going to try to cast two, and then we're going to try and cast to our BP underscore receiver. Now, because you can have multiple blueprints in the screen in the scene, we need to specify that it's this one that we're trying to send our information to. So the way that we do that is we create a new variable and this is going to be of type actor, object type actor, object reference. This is going to be the receive target, receive tar, as I like to call it. Drag receive tar into the scene, get receive tar, and I'm gonna plug that into this object here. Now I wanna make that public so that I can set this variable. And I'm going to tell it as BP receiver, I'm going to call the receive function. So when I overlap, it prints overlap. When I receive, it tells the receiver to play the function. And let's put a thing in here of print string so that we know if we are sending. And we should also have one to know if we are failing print string fail. Okay. Now we are going to compile this and save this. And this one is already compiled and saved. So I want to move this out of the way. I select my sender in the scene. I look at my details and I scroll down until I get to my default where my variables show up. And I'm going to specify which object I want to have working here. And it's BP receiver. So it now knows that this is the object. And again, that's the name of my blueprint. Let's close all of these. But what if my blueprint was renamed to BP receiver in scene or whatever you want it to be called. If I then select this one, I know by this name, it's specific to the object in the scene. So if I play test this, if I walk up here and step on this, it is overlapping and it's sending and it's receiving. So there we go. That is how I can have one blueprint tell another bl blueprint how to do something. Now that animation has gone all the way through and then stopped. So the other thing that I can do, if I wanna make this a little more complex, where'd my blueprints go? They're over here. If I wanted to have this receive rotate triggered on all of this business this would work but what if i wanted to trigger it and then have it go back well i could also set a variable which would boot boolean which would be is this triggered let's actually change that to is triggered and so is triggered if it if this happens we're going to want to set it as it's been triggered so we can do that anywhere within this string. It's usually better to do it early. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna put it up here and I'm gonna say is triggered, set. So when we get the print string, it's going to say is triggered is now true. And what would be best is if we actually set this to branch before we set that, And then we will get the is triggered and we'll say if is triggered is true, then we want to, well actually if it's false, we're gonna do this, alt click to remove that string. And if it's true, we're going to instead, actually let's pull in is triggered first, set is triggered. If it's true, we're going to say, no, let's, let's make it false. Let's turn it off and let's set this to reverse. Let's compile that 
and let's try playing this now. So if I hit it once, it's gonna rotate, and then I step off, and if I hit it a second time, it's gonna go back. And so if I sort of dance over it, it's gonna go back and forth. So this is essentially operating as a switch. Now the other thing is if I shoot, my collision on that blueprint is not set to receive projectiles. So I have a student who's trying to use this exact same thing right now, but trying to use the projectiles to trigger these other blueprints to move. So I'm going to bring my sender back in. I'm going to go to my box and I'm going to scroll down to collisions. And here under collision, collision presets overlap all dynamic, which blocks projectiles. Now I could go and try and set this as a trigger, which usually means projectiles are ignored. Um, for some reason on my machine lately, it actually means that that's working. Um, I don't know why that is, but what I usually do here is I leave it as overlap all dynamic, and then I set this to custom and I change projectile to overlap. I then compile and save. And I now press play. And if I grab the gun and shoot through that, I now trigger this invisible collision box here, which sets that animation in motion. And if I do it again, it rotates back. And if I do it again, it rotates forward. So let's go ahead and stop this. Let's pull our code in here and let's remove our details just so that we can see this a little bit bigger. Let's put this on screen. So this is our actor begin overlap on sender. And then let's pull our receiver off. Try and do the same thing. So I will leave you with an on screen. Oops. I will try to leave you with an on-screen view of the two scripts so that it's much easier. Pull this up a little bit. We're going to close our details. Okay. Here we go. So our sender is event actor begin overlap. We have a prince string to check. We cast to the class that we're trying to affect. We're telling it which specific object of that class in the scene we're using by using a public variable that we set in the details in the scene. And we are calling the receive function that is in our receive target. I called that receive function by pulling off this as receiver and then typing in receive, which is our function that we're calling. That often, for people doing this the first time, that's the tricky part. We don't, or at least you didn't used to, if you pull off the pin and start typing receive. Oh, nice, you can find it that way now. That's new, that's actually pretty clean. Um, and then our receive is a custom event, which is in our receiver, and it is set to do a print string, but then also branch, check on whether or not you've already been triggered based on this set that is triggered and it calls whatever functions you want to have happen which for me was a timeline with rotator where i make a rotator and i rotate that object okay so all of this hopefully is pretty clear and helpful uh, you can call you can set variables in other blueprints you can do tons of things once you have an understanding of how to use this cast to BP receiver or cast to whatever class you want to be casting to. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Um, otherwise, I'll see you for the next tutorial shortly.